Uh, so today we are going to uh, uh, discuss about another interesting topic uh, about uh, change management and uh, change management and uh, project management goes hands to hand uh, because uh, um, each project I mean basically will uh, end up in a change in an organization so uh, it's important you as a project manager to understand certain basic concepts of change management um, uh, it's a different ball game because change management is about handling people and uh, and uh, um, so you as project managers who is handling a project which will definitely give you a uh, end result will be a change in your organization in whatever means uh, any project that you do um, and uh, which will re require people to adjust to the change uh, people to adjust to the environment the new environment uh, you as a project manager um, you will have to handle the people element of it how to handle the people change management so today we will discuss certain interesting theories a few interesting theories uh, which are which is uh, uh, renowned in the world uh, with regard to change management um, so uh, nothing new uh, 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 there's a there's a saying famous saying that when the rate of change outside exceeds the rate of change inside uh, the end is in the side so i mean in today's world uh, during even during this period uh, the rate of change i mean uh, outside exceeds the rate of change inside and i mean um, i mean basically and you will have to gear up yourself in your organization to meet the rate of change of outside otherwise your end is um, almost at the near so it's uh, the key good example is the actually this the, the covid 19 uh, incident and we see how organization change their strategies uh, to overcome the current crisis situation where they cannot do their normal sales um, when i was going through these slides um, uh, I was thinking, I mean, uh, in Sri Lanka, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the floral um, delivery people, the Lassana Flora guys, and uh, they were predominantly a floral flower distributor. And how overnight they came as a distributor to deliver uh, other essential goods and vegetables to the um, during the curfew period of the lockdown period of COVID-19. So that is your how agile your organization is, how fast you can change to the current situation uh, of the outside and so that you can carry on with your normal business operations. So, um, um, so in organizations, I mean, basically, uh, there are n number of forces. Um, there are an, a limitless number of forces that forces uh, an organization to change on day-to-day -day basis. Uh, a situations like this, a special situations like this, a crisis situation like this, um, maybe due to technology uh, advancements uh, that you um, uh, you try to change your organization. We see uh, how innovation will. Uh, drove out Kodak or drove out uh, some other organizations and there's a famous case studies where innovations uh, uh, wiped off uh, organization entire business so that there is a need for change from the organization side sometimes uh, you know, we see these days how e-commerce um, is changing the landscape of um, the uh, the, uh, the business where everybody's jumping into e-commerce and delivery services and uh, maybe sometimes we see the traditional conventional privatizations uh, of organizations how people tend to change how people tend to resist changes and uh, even sometimes mergers and acquisitions of organizations um, large organizations merging together definitely they are they i mean they will have to change when telecom companies merge together um, there will be new processes, uh, new mergers, two divisions coming in together. So there will be definitely there will be change. Right. 
so success is actually uh, uh, is adapting to change and uh, and um, worldwide uh, renowned um, uh, renowned uh, what you call uh, surveys have proved that organizations that has the agility to change uh, agility to um, quickly adapt to new changing environments of the outside uh, will be the most successful organizations and it's a proven example for nowadays with the COVID-19 uh, uh, incidents that we have seen how organizations are dying and how organizations are uh, changing their business strategies to be alive uh, with the current um, uh, situation. So change management is another art and uh, is another uh, what you call uh, people handling and handling change is another another what you call uh, it's another subject so there are there are level of maturity levels that uh, an organization have adopted change management so we will be discussing in a little bit of time uh, what are the change management theories and how um, how well organizations can mature with their change management processes so more the organization is handling change management in a more uh, in a more uh, more uh, what you call uh, organized manner uh, they i mean there is more success for it so um, studies have shown uh, that um, organizations who are matured and who have matured processes and guidelines and uh, matured organization processes to handle change uh, will have a higher uh, success rate in projects because projects will deliver change to your organization. Then again, how the concepts of change management is getting integrated into concepts of project management, how you combine change management concepts with your project management, how you practice change management within your project management. The more you combine change management principles with your project management principles, I mean, there will be more success rate. And uh, so people who have integrated your change management concepts with your project management concepts uh, in your organization, who have practiced change management with the project management, has a more success rate in achieving your project objectives at the end of the day. Same goes to uh, these are some of the uh, uh, available research that they have done and uh, uh, the effectiveness, the more the effectiveness of change management and practices in your organization and there will be a higher um, percentage of people achieving uh, uh, success in your projects. Same goes to schedule. Uh, when you're doing a project schedule, now we have discussed already the schedule, the cost uh, and the scope. And uh, so same goes to same concept. Even in the schedule, uh, more, more in control of your change, more the project manager is in control of your change and more the project manager controls the resistance to change and your project will be on track. The moment that your, your project manager is uh, is not in control of the resistance to change of each individual who is involved in the project, who is affected by the project directly or indirectly. Um, more, it will be a, uh, I mean, you will be out of your schedule. So, for example, uh, even you are building a highway or any dam um, uh, in a in a country where there is change involved, there there needs to be resettling of people. Uh, and there will be uh, basically uh, basically people will start protesting for the change. Uh, people will start protesting to go out of the areas because their uh, their properties are getting um, acquired for the development project. So uh, more the change is out of control if you do not handle the resistance um, properly, then your project timelines will be uh, over the uh, schedule timelines. Same goes to the budget. Uh, more effective, how effective in your change management uh, will also will be a key factor uh, end of the day to see whether your project budget is within the time, uh, within the budget um, estimated budget and it will be a key another key success factor for your project. 
right so uh, just to open up this session um, uh, why you think uh, people resist change end of the day in an organization or in a, any project yeah so <clears throat> so again there can be various reasons why people resistant to change I mean uh, these are this is not I mean comprehensive definitely have many many reasons and number of reasons why people are resistant to change uh, one simple can be that you're not communicated it properly and uh, mm, people do not understand why uh, mm, why that change is required for example mm, for the early example of a floral company uh, who was predominantly delivering flowers for weddings and other occasions all of a sudden overnight delivering fruits and vegetable and other uh, essentials to customers if the employees of that organization does not understand why the change was overnight done by the management and um, why it is happening and so that communication is is a change decision they will say why they why they should be now carrying vegetables and um, then uh, communication problems uh, inadequate information uh, as you told um, there can be a sense of insecurity uh, now the new there is a new system or a simple project like o365 which is going cloud and uh, and there is um, people are resistant to um, uh, adapt to that change uh, people are resistant to that slowness little bit of slowness of cloud based uh, cloud based email access um, against uh, on prem um, uh, on prem versus email access so there can be n number of reasons why people start resisting for change right so the consequences again not managing change as we as we to as we discussed a little bit earlier maybe there can be schedule overruns you as a project manager you cannot control your schedule and uh, since you take a longer time to manage the change uh, you take longer time to people to train you take longer time to people to make um, to desire to people to think that they will participate in this change people to convince that they will participate in this change of the organization people to think that okay i am okay I'm, i will now participate in this erp project so <clears throat> so ma so there can be budget overruns, um, schedule overruns, and um, low productivity because um, if people, no matter how implement, how uh, theoretically you have implemented the ERP system, if all the features are not um, used by the employees, and uh, if uh, if um, productivity features are not used by the employees, then again the end result of that project may not achieve the original intended um, results and uh, then again if change is not uh, established properly even after the project people will revert back to the old ways of doing things and we have seen in many projects um, what we do people just revert back to old ways of doing things once again uh, despite of you have implemented certain workflow methods or maybe you, are, you have developed a workflow method um, where to go paperless but after two or three months again uh, since you have not established certain policies and guidelines to then no we must use workflow method we are thereafter we are not going to use paperwork after about two or three months they tend to reverse back to old paper method and uh, uh, or people might find awkward workarounds um, to um, um, to give away with the change um, so these are one of the uh, uh, one of the certain issues that if you do not manage a change apart from a project the project man might, might be theoretically completed but then actually the effective result of the project might not get realized and sometimes I mean we are seeing how government projects or government uh, certain things we will totally abandon and totally scrap of your project after after implementing two or two or three months after implementing you totally scrap them out so there can be drastic consequences of not managing change so this uh, brings us to a business case that there is a business case apart from project management there is a business case for change management so then change management is a different subject a different ball game apart from project management which goes hand to hand and uh, so there's a business case 
for change management. Right. So Prosci is one of the change management world renowned uh, consulting firm and, uh, uh, and who have spearheaded how the human behavior, the psychological behavior uh, of, uh, of change management. And they have developed certain uh, what you call uh, interesting theories uh, uh, of how individual change management occurs, how change management occurs in an organization. So, we, so one of the first concepts that uh, theories that we try to discuss in detail, which will give you a great idea of how human behavior is, is, is one of the theories or models that ProSci has developed on change management. So, so directly, uh, directly taking some uh, slide decks from ProSci, um, one of their slide decks available, and let me try to explain certain things. Uh, so, so from any project, a change is actually from the current state to a future state, and uh, you go to a transition state, uh, maybe maybe a 365 project or a ERP project or a factory building project or whatever it is. So, uh, from a current state, a change, we go for a future state, and there will be a transition period. So, always an organization after a change they believe that the performance of uh, a change uh, after change should be greater than the performance of the current state so that is actually the business case so any organization doing a project or conducting a change will will would like to see the performance of the of the future state is greater than the performance of the current state otherwise there, is, there should be no reason for change end of the day Right. So, uh, so when organization moves on from current state to the future state to a transition period, it requires uh, a fully uh, organization to be fully successful for a change. It requires each individual, each individual in the current state of your organization, to move with the organization to the future state. And uh, and the key is that. In any organization, ultimately, it all depends on the individuals who runs the organization. End of the day. So, if you are if you are implementing a co-banking system, so you require everybody in the banking front end and the back end of the systems who are working in the branches and everybody into every individual in the current state to go to a transition state and come to a future state to get the full benefit of implementing a co-banking system. So, so if you analyze it, actually, the true unit of change is actually individual. It boils down to individual. So, true unit of change is actually boils down to individual, and uh, nothing else the individual. So, so you as a project manager, you have to push. Your objective is to push everybody, push the old employee, the younger generation employees, and everybody into the future state through the project change. Right. So, so you as a project manager again, uh, what you what you do not want to happen is a block like this. So where some people are in the transit stage and some people are not in the future state, and some people have not come in the are still in the current state. So you as a project manager, it is very important, or you as a change manager, for if you are, if you are if you are acting as a role of a change manager. So your one of your prime objectives should be actually to bring everybody into the future state so that everybody like this should be in the green color in the future state and not a half big um, situation like this so it's a difficult task because everybody's transition rate will be different the old employees um, will be will be having difficult to adapt to new technology and the younger generation employees will be in a in a different phase they will come into the future state in a in a faster mode whereas old employees will come in a in a delayed mode but end of the day you have to ensure that everybody is in the future state right so we as project managers or technologists uh, or solution developers uh, we as 
we can actually design software or solutions and be it a, be it a solution or a software or be it an, any other thing uh, we can develop it and we can deal with it so this is from the solution side so to get the future ready uh, uh, from the project manager side actually we can design a software a solution we can develop a solution and we can deliver a solution on time but then the success of the project will definitely will depend on the adaptation of that project or adaptation of the system for the success of the organization will will definitely will depend on individuals who will embrace the change who will who use o365 who use the core banking system who will use the features of all the advanced features of the system and who will adapt to the who will adapt to it and who will use the all the features of the system so so much you will understand that how much you deliver a system uh, on time there will be no use to an organization if the employees do not embrace the change and adapt it and use it right so one of the uh, <clears throat> so one of the key uh, one of the uh, change management theories of building blocks that have been developed by Prozai is the adka adka theory so a d k a r the adka theory so the adka theory is uh, or the adka building block is is actually all about individuals so what they say is uh, for a change to happen successfully uh, first you will have to create awareness and make the desire so so people make the choice to participate in the change and uh, give them knowledge and give them the ability to use the advanced features and the trainings and then use the reinforcement methodologies so to um, to ensure that the change is a sustainable change that they won't revert back to the old method of doing work, doing things so let's quickly go through this um, so A stands for awareness for the need of the change and D is the desire to support the change and the desire of the individual who will make that choice to support the change of the organization and the knowledge and the, you give to how to how to do the change and ability you give to training on to demonstrate their skills and behavior on the uh, on the change and reinforcement makes you to make them stick with the change so be it a single since since as we in short while ago discuss people uh, organizations are built with people and be it a one person be it five persons or 20 persons or thousand thousand persons so everybody has to move to this what they say is to this adka model to have a successful change this deep dive a little bit on on a, on each of these elements uh, so awareness is actually is is where you create the need of the change we are trying to people to understand of your organization why this change is required why you are why you are implementing o365 in your organization why you are implementing um, and uh, e uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 e website, a uh, um, um, uh, uh, shopping cart um, altogether, and uh, why it is needed. So, if you can remember in this COVID uh, situations, uh, the keels, uh, even Kagis, did not have a e commerce website. So, why a rapid change of e commerce website is required um, at this moment of time? Why that change is required in a, such a hurry? and what happens what will happen if we don't as an organization what will happen if we don't uh, give the change uh, quick as possible and what will happen to the uh, the uh, the floral distributor what will happen if we do not switch to uh, delivering of um, uh, of um, dry ration so other food and materials what will happen to the taxi service the pick me service if we do not try to deliver other stuff as quick as possible so why this need is change change so so some of the factors that influence awareness is uh, uh, is your view of the current state and you as an employee in an, in an organization what is your view of the current current state um, will affect uh, 
will, will, will influence the awareness of, your, of your thing. And then how you perceive the problem. So if you think as an employee that it's not my problem and um, to uh, it's an organization to change that it's not my problem or how you perceive the problem so um, I mean basically how you take your the problem into your into your mind so that will influence the awareness level of an employee and also some, they say that the credibility of the sender of the message maybe your CEO is telling this change and putting his foot down and telling that look here we need to go for this change at this moment of time otherwise the organization can't survive so um, this is why we are building a new factory this is why we are putting a new ERP system to improve efficiency this is why we are going for 365 so um, the credibility of the sender will also influence the awareness session maybe uh, for you um, for your team people um, uh, CEO coming coming up front and telling him to uh, as an organization as a whole um, will give you more weight and people will start thinking why this change is needed so what they say is actually it's not that okay we communicated to them it's not that uh, you're telling come and telling it that uh, yes we told them and that's why we need to deliver food during this in this period no that is not what is required from this awareness what they say is that the need for change you have to clearly establish why you're doing this project why you're doing this um, project the need for change has to get established properly then comes to the desire desire is where actually the where your you change your mind and switch your mind and this is the point that you will decide an employee will decide no i am going to support this initiative of this company and i am going to support this project so uh, um, so again it is influenced by uh, many uh, what this is some several factors so one of the key factors that is the desire the, the choice the people make no I will this I will help this organization in this project no I will I will I will come to the co banking project no I will come to the ERP project and help this organization so what is informing so that is very true I mean people we all as I mean uh, as uh, as people uh, of natural people and we will always look at what is in for me in this project and what is the benefit that I'm going to get is there a monetary benefit or is there a, um, is there a, what you call an uh, organization wise benefit maybe maybe your your maybe your develop your implementing a co-banking system and usually a large-scale project like that we try to take the key people key knowledge resources from every department and try to make a, a group the key and the key group of the project uh, who will be the business owners of the project so people might again why should people for the same salary come come and participate in that project uh, without any other benefit sometimes people um, you might give them a uh, an additional allowance so what is in for me in that project or sometimes people might think no there will be a career progression I mean after going to this key um, key co-banking project team and I will have more knowledge and people I will be a, a, a superior person after this project because I will have more I'll be one of the uh, 15 or 20 people in the entire um, organization that will have the entire knowledge of the co-banking system so what is in for me organization context will also uh, and the context of the current current context of the organization like the COVID-19 the current context the current uh, uh, current uh, um, uh, current uh, the bad situation or the context of the organization will also influence people to think no okay let's go go for it and let's support this organization and let's go for this change um, sometimes the individual situation of of the individual I mean uh, his personal situation uh, sometimes they say the the value systems that individual have been brought in uh, say basically uh, the, the value systems of people uh, will also affect I mean we see in organization many people do not come up front to support projects some people definitely come up front to support project where they have a value system in that um, so the the individual situation of people and what mo motivates you does money motivates you uh, what external factors motivates you internal factors does it motivates you uh, that's uh, does career progression motivates you so what motivates you will give you that switch that point of time that you think no I will support this 
uh, project for this organization you got that guys yes. right so one of the <coughs> examples that you say what, what they say is uh, say this uh, see this example um, it's a same advertisement uh, it's a it's same advertisement to wear your seat belt and uh, what strikes you and what switches your mind uh, will be different to each and every piece of people what switches your mind to adapt with that change what switches with your mind to start buckling up your seat belts whether it's your saving your life or whether it's your adhering to the law or you take a ticket of 142 dollars so i might think it's my life so i will that's my desire that's my switching point sometimes no it's a law you might think some other people might think no it's a law so th this poster will, will be the striking poster for them some people who are a bit monetary conscious and uh, is 142 is the their their, their desire to ch to support the change of buckling up your seat belts will be because of the monetary and the fine so uh, so so you understand same change nothing else buckle up your seat belt but different desires will make switch your mind got it got it yes right move forward so knowledge again <coughs> Knowledge is also an important factor. Uh, this is, I mean, the, 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 the knowledge of the change and how to change and uh, uh, what is need to know after. And uh, the, after the awareness and the desire comes in, um, the knowledge of the, of the system or the knowledge of the change. So, that is also depends on the, the it's influenced by certain factors i mean basically the current knowledge the, your current knowledge i mean basically the the knowledge of the key key um, key project team uh, that you pick for the co-banking system implementation their knowledge will be, be very much better but for the other people who is in the organization in the branches of the bank um, maybe you will have to do some trainings and get the knowledge in um, of about the change and uh, then again it also depends from people to people the the learning style and the learning capability and you know that each individual have his own capacities of um, absorbing knowledge so uh, so your learning style will be and the people who are older people in your organization the learning curve and the learning time will be more or the capabilities will be more um, uh, will be less especially the older generation on on adapting into new touchpad or new computer system or a new co-banking system maybe the ability to grasp knowledge will be different people will have different uh, ability to grasp knowledge also again the resources available all again the knowledge um, the resource, the training resources available the how much of training that you give um, how much of foreign experts that you bring in and um, train about the, uh, the system um, um, for the of the core banking system so the, it also has a direct impact on the resources that you put into your um, 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 trainings to improve the knowledge of your staff uh, <clears throat> next comes the ability so ability and the knowledge is not equal uh, ability is actually the co the key skills that is required to operate the co-banking system uh, uh, what they say is uh, for example uh, what they say is uh, in golf in golf uh, so knowledge you know that uh, you have to play with a uh, what you call a club and uh, you know by knowledge that you have to keep your legs like this and you should not bend your knees and this is how you strike and uh, this is how you do things so that is the knowledge part of it and knowledge on the game of golf 
and ability to play golf is two different things so ability to swing your club and put your ball to the um, uh, the uh, the uh, the whole idea. so that that ability to do it and the knowledge about the game is two different things so knowledge and ability is two different things its ability is more into the skill side sometimes the gap between knowledge and ability will be lesser uh, in certain in certain areas sometimes it will be a great effort where the knowledge and the ability of the advanced aspect of your system so that training will be more so so again as individual uh, the uh, uh, the grasping um, side of the ability of individuals will be different to uh, different it will be um, the again since it's more on training based and the, and the 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 resources have a direct impact of how much of skill that you get trained uh, physical capability sometimes not all projects are like IT projects sometimes it might require physical capabilities of a uh, change in your physical capabilities so sometimes um, some people might not have that physical capabilities to do things sometimes it's a psychological effect <clears throat> so these are some of the factors uh, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a habitual thing that you try to create so ability again like knowledge have some uh, influencing factors but the key factor is that knowledge and ability is two different things it's more into skills skill side and uh, more into advanced aspect of how to use in the system got that so so uh, again a question to you guys i mean what are the reasons for i mean what what type of reinforcements that you be meaning for you i mean so once a change is done so now we are given the awareness people have desire have shown that desire to participate in the change we are given them knowledge we are given them the ability to, to on the systems to train and then of course reinforcement get the change established um, again, to ensure that they are not giving back so there can be i mean people are i mean different people are different things and so basically uh, uh, the reinforcement might be might have different meanings to you sometimes a reinforcement might be i mean a verbal recognition or a personal note a thank you note so that i mean so that you will not go back uh, after the change you will not go back to the previous method of doing things or sometimes uh, rewards and recognitions um, sometimes it will be there like that and more than that even uh, there can be strict policies and guidelines and saying that now we have implemented the ERP system now we have implemented the co-banking system and hereafter this is the new way of doing the doing things so for different people the reinforcements come in a different ways So, <clears throat> so when it comes to so when 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 you summarize the outcome model for individuals, so awareness, um, basically, you will have to specify the need for change, and after you did the awareness, I mean, an employee should be able to say, now I understand why this organization telling me to do this change. Desire, I mean, to participate. I mean, the objective is to participate and support the change. Mm -hmm. And after you create the desire, your employee will say, "I will. I have decided to participate in this project." And knowledge on how to change. Now I know how to change. Ability to implement the required skills and the behaviors that is required. Now I am able to. Now I am able to do the things and do the task. So I mean, basically, so a, a simple project like a five years project or an ISO project. Uh, or a quality control project so basically it's ability the behavior you have to in the five years project it's that I mean, the training is more you give the knowledge about five years and also the ability about the five years and all your equipment should be in separate place everything should be labeled all the files should be labeled so it's the behavior pattern that the behavior pattern you try to um, try to train your um, employees so now i am able to uh, now I am able to align with the five five S um, of the organization. So reinforcement again, 
how to sustain the change and ensure that they won't come out from five years again even after one year's time so i'm i'm i will i will continue to do like this i will continue to stay on five five ways of your of our organization that we implemented so what are the mechanism the measurements and to that you have done the policies and the guidelines to sustain the change that you have um, that we have implemented in the in the organization so <clears throat> Some real, real life example again, a simple example. In hotel doors, uh, in a hotel, you might see uh, something like this, a banner, something like that behind the, in the in the hotel room. Uh, take a moment to read this. So what it says is, save your planet, dear guest, every day millions of gallons of water is used to wash towels and that uh, have only been used once. Make your choice. A towel on your rack means I will use it again. Towel on the floor means please replace. Thank you for helping us and conserve the Earth's vital resources. So if you can you map this to the Ed Common? Why the awareness coming in? Which part is the awareness coming in? Every day, uh, that every day part, uh, millions of gallons what are used. Correct. Okay. So, uh, and the desire. The choice, basically, it's a towel on the rack. Then that says you make the choice that that part is. That's right. So you part you decide to participate in this or not. So it's up to you to decide to participate in this or not. So uh, you make the choice of it, and then the knowledge part of it. Why is the knowledge coming in? What do you have to do? Basically, either you keep the trouble on the rack or keep it on the floor. floor. Right? Keep it on the rack or keep it on the floor. Obviously, the ability part of this is not, not it's it's inside this. What is the ability part? Bend your knees and keep the keep the uh, keep the trouble on the floor, right? That's the ability part. Here, the knowledge and the ability is almost the same. Okay, uh, so the skill to keep the towel on the floor is nothing to teach. So here, the knowledge and the ability is almost overlapping together. And the reinforcement is simple thank you, gratitude to tell that that is reinforced. That is this this message message will ensure that the guest will comply with, with this policy over and over again. A simple thank method of saying thank you. To conserve the Earth's vital resources. So got it. <clears throat> so this is the nature of the, this is the change. Why the change is needed? This is the personal decision choice. Make your choice. And knowing how to make the change, uh, the choice, um, keeping on the rack or keeping on the floor. Here, obviously, the K and A, the knowledge and the ability is almost overlapping together. And the gratitude to make, make it and stick it to it. So this is a, another simple example uh, away from project or anything a simple example how you try to convince people to uh, for a change end of the day got it <coughs> so uh, in 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 the ad model what they say is uh, you can actually measure you can uh, it's a it's, it's by see, keep putting up a questionnaire uh, to your employees after the awareness session uh, initial awareness session you can put up a questionnaire to your um, employees and put up a scale like this and ask them whether whether do you know the need for the change um, 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 or, um, some some questions that will 
and that we can calculate the level of awareness of the people on the need to change in this organization why we are implementing ERP system so in a scale like this what they always say is always try to uh, always try to uh, put the uh, level above the natural level natural what they say is again sorry the neutral the neutral level so neutral is also a bit dangerous i don't know okay I, I know the need i know the need um, um yeah 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 but but that is not enough so basically what they say is always at each of these pillar try to push it above the neutral level so the breaking point is so wh what they say is the breaking point the feeling point for a person is is breaking the neutral barrier um, I mean I mean people who are on the fence you can't be on the fence so put it above the neutral barrier and also what they say is the stumbling block is actually the first the first uh, first element first element of the ICA model uh, which is below the the neutral level so if you take um, different different organization will have different different levels so uh, so different 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 people will have different different levels of this uh, adcom model so always the first one so this guy if you take for example so he understand he understand the need of the change so he's at the agree agree level but then desire again he is on the fence he is below the fence also he is disagreeing that his desire to participate in this change so this is the first part stumbling block for you before coming to this reinforcement so what they say is the first stumbling block which is below the uh, below the neutral level you as a change manager must push this upwards below the neutral level so if you take this example with different different examples here the first barrier what they say is the ability here actually if you take this employee yes he strongly believes that there is a need for a change his full heart from his heart he's supporting it he has a knowledge but again he's he's lacking with his ability so then uh, he, he might not know the advanced aspect or the uh, certain features of the ERP system so he's lacking the ability uh, maybe he does not know certain aspect of the O365 how to use teams how to use um, how to use certain other features of the, the O365 then again here will be the the barrier point for the complete uh, to an organization to uh, benefit from a complete change so same goes to the other employee same goes to the other employee before coming to these pillars first this fellow has to he is on a neutral level of his not awareness to need to change so he is uh, yeah, yeah, he's on the fence oh, why should we go to 365 right so he's on the he's on the fence so first you as a change manager or a come project manager first you will ensure that push this up before before tackling this same goes to the other guy uh, his his awareness is okay so he knows it, but again the desire is low so we have to push this up before tackling these two push this out first and the last guy maybe an old guy in your organization he does not understand anything and he does not agree with the 365 change and he does not agree with um, anything so first before tackling any of this get the awareness and get get him to come to this level why we are going for 365 why are you going for 365 and maybe because of covid situation we are going for 365 because we can work from home so get get him understand the need to transform into 365 so so all this time we were talking about individuals so we were talking the adca model was all this time we were talking about individual the old people the new people the people with different different levels of different levels of desires and different levels of knowledge and abilities so these are all about individual people now how can we connect this entire model to an organization so <clears throat> so uh, uh, so they they give i mean basically a few steps i mean on this and uh, we have to first establish the, the why we need change for a reason 
and uh, we have to first understand again we have to understand that organization requires individual change that we already discussed so one of the game one of the principles of this at Commonwealth is that the organization change requires individual people then the organization's outcomes are collective results of individual change that we also discussed a short while ago the entire outcome of the project is actually a collective result of the individual change change management uh, is an enabling framework that managing people 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 side of the change so change management than the project management is an is actually a, a framework that you try to tackle people who is involved in the project who is affected from the project and we apply the change management to realize the benefits and desires of the outcome of the change so why we so these are the one of the five uh, things that they you know, five what you call the uh, you know, um, basic rules of uh, of the prosci concept is that we apply change management to ensure that we realize the benefit of a of a of a project that we do across the organization across the people and once you do across the people in general that means the collective outcome is for the organization benefit so this we discuss even one person or several persons it's people its organizations are including people so so what this says actually uh, <clears throat> when you come to organization level first you should have a strategy for organization change and including your sponsorship and the team structure we discussed in a short while including your sponsorship and the disc uh, and the streams team structure you should have a change management strategy to uh, to establish change for the entire organization because if you are a large organization I mean basically you cannot go on tackling each and every individual people so what they have done is they have club these things together and the ADCA model and as a first step in phase one you should have a proper change management strategy and a change management team a core change like your project management team there should be a change management team sometimes whether you are knowingly or unknowingly your core project management team the 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 team that you took from the departments to do your core banking system uh, the department representatives the core change the core project team acts whether you knowingly or unknowingly acts as a change management team for your entire organization right and they will be training your supervisors they will be training the head, head of divisions because they know the entire system so they are knowingly or unknowingly they act as a change management team so first have a uh, have a strategy and get your team and get your sponsors ready we discuss in a time in a, in a moment then once that is done then of course uh, then you try um, certain action points we'll discuss in a short while that will affect this each element of ADCA model so we come to that we for example we should have a organization wide a communication plan in project management we design we actually a uh, project management uh, if you can remember we discuss about a communication plan so um, so to to create awareness organization wide have a, to create awareness for individual A's, individual A's of each individual person to tackle it, have an organization wide awareness program. So likewise, have your, uh, have your plans and tactics ready for this. And then go for the, uh, then go for the, the reinforcement model. Where, where you try to develop certain policies and procedures, corrective actions, uh, corrections to ensure that this change what you have done with a difficulty is adopted and sustained. Let's deep dive into uh, some of this. So once again, again to re-establish from technical side, from the project management side, we can de design, develop and deliver you a solution for the organization and then but from the people side people have to embrace the solution adapt the solution and use the solution use the core banking system for its all its features to ensure that the results the efficiency that the organization 
uh, expects to come. So, again, uh, to reposition ourselves, projects will change from once will change your one organization organization from your current state to future state, and this is why we need change management um, come into picture in order to get a successful project to be implemented. Right. Uh, so almost the same thing uh, <coughs> that we discussed earlier. The technical side and the people side of. So the technical side is actually is delivered through project management, and the people side is delivered through change management discipline. Right. So again, just to recap, uh, change is driven by organizations uh, uh, due to various reasons, maybe ISOs or business model expansion, ex expansion, downsizing. These days, you will you will hear downsizing in another few few months time, which will be another topic. Will be another change to your organizations, technology upgrades. So this is to recap why changes are required for for your business, and <coughs> what this says, I mean. Uh, Basically, uh, um, 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 a project. This is where you connect your business, your project, and change. So, uh, if you take a simple Excel sheet, and uh, if you take a simple Excel sheet, and if you are in your IT department, and if you list down all the projects in your IT department, there can be a ERP system running, there can be an e-commerce system running, there can be a firewall upgrade running, or there can be some other thing that is running. So all these projects, if you if you line up your projects, and if you can take an Excel sheet and put your project name, the purpose, why we are changing this, why we are doing this project, why we are changing, and, and what are we changing? And we are changing. We are changing the e-commerce system. We are doing, introducing a new, a new platform. We are doing, introducing a normal new mobile banking system due to COVID or something like that. A mobile app. And who will be and who will be changing? And what are who are the affected people who will be changing within your organization and even outside your organization because of this project? So this is where actually you can see if you do this exercise. This exercise will actually give you a very clear picture. A business which is coming from the business case the purpose of the project and the project the business and the change management side this will give you an entire clear picture of how you connect your business to change management down the line to each individual persons in your organization right let's take a two uh, let's take some example <coughs> so uh, Let's take, let's, let's take a project where actually uh, you are just implementing an, an intranet of an organization and it's a bit of a, um, a maybe a bit of a, um, a, a workflow project and uh, an intranet and basically for the intranet maybe affecting yes you are affecting your organization maybe um, all the employees are using the intranet but basically uh, something like an intranet who will be the uh, the division that will take the uh, more um, uh, more responsibility apart from IT division for internet implementation? Any idea? So internet is basically is usually is driven by the HR division because it's 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 about employees and employee information. Your organization chart will be there in the internet. All your forms, documents, policies, procedures will be published in the internet. So basically, internet is a basically a bit of a HR driven initiative together with the maybe your show your to SharePoint you're trying to develop an internet. It's a bit of a HR driven initiative through through your IT division. Then again, <coughs> take a second example that uh, 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 an example where actually you are trying to implement a OC65 
which are again a technological change entire organization to make it a bit complex uh, maybe you, know, you have acquired another 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 organization and because because of the acquisition um, you are actually going for a more organization wide o365 implementation which is a more 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 complex project than the uh, project of an uh, internet project so if you take this uh, if you take this uh, <coughs> uh, example basically what they say is uh, firstly since you are in phase one now we are trying to uh, plan up a strategy for your change uh, do a small situational analysis a situational analysis of the current situation of, of your organization so one thing that you have to take is that uh, in one side of your graph is actually the uh, uh, the change characteristics I mean basically the size the scope um, scope of your project I mean how large is your project if you are if you are conducting a, a massive uh, uh, massive e-commerce system which is a large disruptive project then how large is your project if you are doing a full mobile app uh, and um, and um, what you call a uh, uh, mobile mobile banking or um, digital banking system then how, how disruptive is your project or it's a, it, it is a small, small, small project, maybe a small uh, uh, firewall implementation, which is affecting a, a limited crowd. So take the characteristic of your project, and also from the other side, take the uh, organization attributes. Now, what is the history of your organization? Is your organization a government organization? What is the culture of your organization? And do you have a, a change management ready team, a management team in your organization? How how well the change management is getting embraced? So you can you can actually assess your organization whether you are a private organization, maybe towards a change management ready organization. Uh, more towards a government organization because of the culture a change resisted organization so with this you can for each of the projects that you have uh, identified you can actually sorry sorry uh, uh, you can actually map your projects so so be it um, maybe your internet project will be a small scales a small scale uh, incremental project whereas your um, O365, which is an organization-wide project, will be a bit of a large-scale project. So here you can identify with the organization attributes, whether you, if you are a bank, then of course it's a bit of a bureaucratic organization with policies and procedures and resistance to change will be there. If you are a bit of a tech savvy or small organization, then of course implementing an ERP and internet system will be a bit more easy for you. So here you can actually map and see what is the situation of your organization and how much of change management effort that you will have to put in to your organization right then again uh, um, you will have to understand i mean uh, you will have to understand uh, the that for a person this change will have i mean will will affect in many ways for example uh, maybe oc65 um, implementation it might be it or erp implementation for a person it might affect the processes maybe the way he's doing things sometimes in a, an implementation a change for a, or a person can be the impact for a person can be because of systems maybe because of location say you're opening up a new branches and uh, you uh, it's a new change to your organization you're opening up a new brand massive branch expansion organize um, project so you have been asked to go and work maybe you're resisting because you have a location issue right uh, this is why doctors resist to go to uh, rural places because you have a location issue because your children may be here and now you have been asked to go to a project and work or for a prolonged period of time in Dubai or when you're um, opening a new branch uh, you are resisting because it's impacting there's a location issue for you maybe a compensation issue is for you um, uh, maybe there is a change in the reporting structure and that that's why you're resisting uh, maybe mindset attitudes and beliefs um, or maybe it's 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 changing your job role 
uh, basically maybe for this for this covid period maybe the floral company uh, uh, delivering food then mm. maybe you don't like it because now you are asked to procure vegetables and um, maybe you are asked to support the um, uh, the distribution so yeah, it's it's something to do with your job role and um, with your mindset with your mindset and you don't like that work so that's why it's impacting so what they say is um, to consider all this and to consider the degree of impact to each and every division and you can assess the degree of impact for each and every division of your organization so, so basically the internet implementation the example that we took may be actually uh, the major impact may be for HR division and uh, IT division likewise maybe an ERP uh, maybe an, a customer relationship management system maybe an HR division is not affected at all like, uh, implementing a CRM system maybe it's a sales division that is affected so likewise so this we are now trying to build up a change strategy first you understand the situation and then you can understand the impact to each group in your organization got it right so once you have done this uh, once you have done the situation analysis then you know what what is what is up to you because you know how much uh, uh, how much of resistance will come and from which and which divisions the resistance will come so you have a better once you have done the situation analysis you have you have a better understanding the resistance either it's coming from the organization nature because of the culture of your organization or maybe because of the personal issues or capacity issues which is arising with with these various uh, various uh, parameters that is affecting to a person so you are very uh, well aware of the anticipated resistance maybe for a um, for a branch expansion or something like that as i told you where people had to get relocated you are well aware before you as a project manager you are well aware before starting the project what is to get anticipated you know definitely are uh, these people will start resisting because they have to relocate themselves into other areas they will because their families are in colombo so they will definitely start re resisting it. so now you have a better idea of it and then again you will have a better idea of what are the tactics what are the tactics to be used like awareness creation or a training or whatever it is what are the tactics or, or some monitor for people who have to relocate you now are not aware that now you are aware that maybe a, a compensation or a you know or a, or a what do you call it a allowance extra allowance will um, motivate them to move out to uh, new areas so like that you will be uh, you will now you will be in a better position to understand what are the anticipated resistance future resistance to come in and the what are the anticipated tactics that you can use for this right then we talked about the team structure as a strategy the team structure so here in project management and change management are two different things and until now maybe until this slide maybe you as a project manager was by de facto acting as a change manager also so you as a project manager uh, maybe was acting as a project manager also so you did a pm role as well as a change management role maybe for large projects uh, there can be a co change management team uh, and uh, with with your hr manager in and some other managers in maybe apart from your project co project management team you have a change management team and uh, which is under you which um, but it's a different team sometimes maybe in organizations uh, project manager and the change management it's 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 outside your purview but then it's there's a separate team or sometimes there's a large change management team and you get a subset of it and which is and for your project which is under your control so you control this change management team which reports to a, a bigger change management team so uh, so it's important to you as a project manager to, um, to settle in, uh, settle in to a to one of these structures, and depending on the structure, uh, basically you will have to have 
collaboration if it's a, if you are selecting a structure like this then there should be a collaboration between you and the uh, change management team here also uh, maybe we'll have to share your goals your goals and the your goal project goals and share your change managers goals so there can be some common you have to share your goals and there can be some complementary disciplines you will have to adapt and they will adapt so because everybody has to speak in one voice what you talk about your awareness and they what what they talk about awareness should be the same so they actually share should be complementary disciplines shared goals there can be cross trainings maybe they are more professional change managers or maybe sometimes you try to hire professional change managers management organization to your to your project maybe your organization has decided no you will hire a professional change management organization to support you in this because it's a tough project to you so maybe then maybe you will have to take some cross training so you to be aware of what they are going to talk and complement what are the what are the things they say and you say so the settling down to a team structure is also an important you as a project manager whether you are going to play that role of a change manager or whether you are going to take help from specialized people for change management um, okay then again this is also be important the sponsor assessment the sponsor assessment is that uh, who are the leaders for change for a main ERP system uh, you uh, may be across your organization your factories your IT your business units um, other business other business units and the leaders so uh, you will have to assess the sponsor who are your who is going to be your change leaders for your project so if you map up like this starting from your CEOs you are, you are trying to implement a, a large ERP system which affects your manufacturing facilities your distribution your lorries and your distribution manager is there your it itcio is there uh, maybe some your sales member maybe your maybe is a, say something like a, like a, um, a well diversified organization maybe one of your business head business you is your electronic appliance selling arm so that business head is there then your t and other manufacturing selling arm business head is there so uh, so your once you do the sponsorship assessment and and to see how much of support that you get uh, once you blueprint this out then you know these red guys are your problem childs and this guy you know he's not going to support you for this change and the manufacturing facility guy is not going to support your change CIO is okay he's understanding he's going to he's a green for me uh, this guy is good he's a green for me but this guy i know uh, he's not a good guy he's going to go and the manager is not going to help me out so from this diagram you know the people who is to tackle because definitely you to tap the people under these people under these managers definitely these leaders should these fellows should be leaders of change if he is not a leader of change then definitely convincing people under him will be a different difficult task for the change so first you have to tackle him first from here you will understand the sponsor assessment and a bottom-up approach to identify groups that who will support your change put your real life example definitely you will, by now from your experience in your organization you know that this if you map a diagram like this who is going to support a change and who is not going to support your change right so end of phase one change management strategy uh, you had done a readiness assessment how much of with your organization culture and how degree of change you know where your which box which quadrant you falls into you know how much of risk is involved you know the anticipated resistance and anticipate the special tactics by this because you know the divisions getting affected people getting affected which parameters of people getting affected because of the location because of the monetary or which parameters of a person that is going affected from that you know the anticipated resistance and the tactics the team structure you know you need to hire a team change management team or whether you are going to play that role and the sponsorship model you know the people are, you are going to be change leaders these will be the real change leaders and these will be problematic change leaders so from this you can develop a full change management strategy with these inputs right the second phase is connecting your ADCA model the uh, with the connecting your organization to your individuals to the ADCA model uh, 
so nothing much nothing much rocket science but this says basically this again we are i'm establishing uh, I, I told this uh, every individual should come to the future state because we don't want a situation like this where some individuals have been left behind we don't want anybody to be left behind everybody should come to the future state of the change to get the more effective of your change effective of your erp system the benefits of your erp system or for example so five plans to tackle your adca system your communication plan you have a communication plan you have a sponsor roadship a coaching plan a training plan and a resistant plan, a resistant management plan so quickly go to the communication plan tackling the awareness part of it uh, especially so you have to send the right message to the right audience with the right sender whether your ceo is sending and in the right time now this is not a good time but then even this is a right time um, organizations in, in trouble because of covid 19 right time send the message to, we have to change our organization business model and with to the right to right channel with his email or verbally or addressing your staff by the ceo to a, a team a microsoft team session or something like that so right message right audience right time right sender right channel then the sponsorship model then since you have understood your sponsor uh, sponsor um, what do you call it it's the sponsor assessment diagram this one and you know the troublemakers of leaders for change you should have a sponsor you should have a special roadmap for your sponsors maybe you have to do a behind the scene scene assistance maybe you know did jolly well that your warehouse manager is not going to support this erp system because he is pretty old he's 50 years of old and he hate this computer system touch system barcoding um, um, handheld devices for your warehouse and where you go and beep beep and take your stock takes he still believe in manual stock take with a piece of pencil and paper so behind the scene assistance for your sponsor once you get the fellow in on board then getting again then getting the warehouse assistance to do the um, do the stock taking through a barcoding system with handheld devices will be easy so get build the confidence of the sponsor have a special team with your project team to look after the sponsors the trouble making the change um, change trouble making change leaderships so behind the scene assistance to them give a direction give support to them give give coaching special coaching special assistance um, you tell me to the warehouse manager if anything you call me or call this guy and he will help you 24 by 7 and he will run to your run to your warehouse manager and to his laptop and look what is wrong and um, and comfort him somehow so because once you comfort him then only he will he will tell your his subordinates to support your project right so So by doing this, uh, we expect three roles by your sponsor, by the sponsor. Sponsor means each division of sponsor. Here the sponsor means actually not the, um, it's also include the project management sponsor, but then here is actually change leader, the change leader. Uh, active participation. So we expect his active participation and visible participation, right? Not the behind the scenes participation. So so that your if your warehouse manager is coming and actively he himself is using the barcode handle devices and by taking the stock take with his other colleagues in the warehouse. So active participation. This will encourage the other other people not to resist. They will also look look here. Our boss is boss himself is now using the handle devices and may, may taking the stock take with barcoding. Then why not we use it? So active participation and visible participation. Build and maintain and correlation build a rapport with them so that he will he will communicate with his team so build and maintain a correlation and then communicate directly with the affected user so you expect him by supporting the sponsor supporting the change leader you expect them uh, him to communicate directly with his staff directly with his affected staff so by sub have a proper plan to support the sponsors that you identified from your structure uh, then you expect you can definitely expect 
a visible participation, a correlation, and a communication, so which will make your life easy as a project manager. Right, coaching plan directly affecting uh, your knowledge part of it. <clears throat> so coaching plan. Then again, uh, you can have a you can have a coaching plan uh, as a group or individual. Again, again. This is targeting the coaching plan, especially targeting targeting the, the, the managers and the people leaders of your organization, the change managers of the organization, the people leaders of your organization, so that you have a special coaching plan for them. Uh, you liaise with them, you have a you communicate with them, um, uh, you manage, you you accept, act, you so they will they will act as a resistant manager, so. Uh, so you coach them so as a as an individual or as a group you do a coaching plan for them then comes the training plan training plan is more into the uh, the knowledge again to the more knowledge and also the, the ability part of it and uh, this is for more 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 into individuals so you have identified from your strategy what are the uh, individual uh, affecting areas, whether, whether it's the skill level issues or whether, what are the areas and you know as a project manager what are the change in requirements and with that um, you, can, you can actually develop a proper context for your training and conduct training for your organization. So sometimes, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, 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 sometimes training might not be your uh, training might not be your uh, your domain as a project manager. So you might uh, basically uh, you might basically uh, basically uh, uh, outsource to another person. If training is not a part of your change management domain or project management domain, then obviously you will tap. Uh, tap other resources or the third party resources for training so this is based on training for individuals and then come up to a resistant management plan so the last element of your uh, uh, managing change will be a resistant management plan so no by by this time with your previous strategy for changing you know what is the uh, uh, resistance to come up with with that you can actually do a uh, proactive re resistant management activities or a reactive resistant management activities or resistant prevention activity so you should have a proper resistant management plan since now you know who are the people affected who are the departments affected what are the parameters that is affected whether they want incentives whether they want relocation incentives whether they want training um, uh, or whatever it is what you have identified so you will you can have a proactive plan as well as reactive plan right so whatever the plan is that it should be customized, scaled and targeted and aligned with your best practices, your communication plan, your sponsorship roadmap, your coaching plan, training plan and the resistance management plan. And these are the areas of so here it represents the individual and here it represents your entire organization. So your communication plan should be such that affects each individual awareness and affects each individual's um, uh, I mean the, uh, the reinforcement part of it so communication will primarily target the awareness part of it of each individual at the initial and also your CEO will do a communication that here after we are going good we are not going back to manual stock taking we are going to do this electronic stock taking so your communication plan to reinforce the change your sponsorship is very important the people leading and the people uh, leaders uh, so it in order to your sponsorship plans and the coaching plans as I told you uh, directly affecting each especially for the people leaders the awareness and their desire to participate in the chain then only you will get the, the other people under them they will set the desire for the other people the people who are under them so the coaching plan will definitely create the sponsors uh, of knowledge and the um, abilities and the gen general training plan will tackle the uh, individuals of knowledge and the abilities of the individuals 
and the resistance management plan will also affect the resistance of the desire and the reinforcement part of it because the resistance management plan is typically into more here where this is where the, the choice is made or the choice is not made so your resistance, man resistance will come from here so you get aware that you need to relocate and then now you start grumbling about your relocation so resistance management plan has to be here then we will say you know we will, we will support you with additional allowance for relocation and also continuously be there maybe the, reinfor uh, the reinforcement for the resistance management right oh so so resistance and reinforcement so the reinforcement plan is where you try to sustain your sustain sustain your change so compliance audits for simple example compliance audits with 5s every year there will be compliance audit with iso every year there will be compliance audits so the compliance audits is not until but ensure that people are continuously adhering to iso standards ensuring people are continuously adhering to 5s standards uh, gap identification as a reinforcement change you can identify the gaps any change any any gaps in your implementation and then do take corrective actions and proactive actions uh, or corrective actions to fill in that gap success celebration again after the implementation of erp maybe you can uh, have a success celebration a small party or a felicitation ceremony or giving some gold coins to your mm, co-team so that it will reinforce the change and it will pump up your motivation level of people to stay in the change that they have achieved <coughs> change stay in the dynamism that they have achieved so any other reinforcement activities uh, and uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, some transfer activities somewhere between your old process and new process so it's it's all about the gap identification um, of reinforcing change right so just to recap we discuss about the outcome model for individuals and applying the outcome model for your organization as a change management strategy change management plans and reinforcement change right so once again coming back to uh, previous slides the technical side is handled by the change manager project management the people side is handled by the change management in all this time we uh, learned the processes if you can the process groups if you can um, if you are following uh, the initial group the planning executing uh, controlling and the closing and then we were, we discuss all this about project management the, the statement of work the project charter the business case the work breakdown structure the bus the budget estimates resource allocation scheduling we discuss tracking and controlling we discuss so all these things are associated with with project management and here we change management we are talking about the organization aspects change strategy managing change reinforcing change and for individual level edgar model and uh, uh, then the tools that we use the communication plans the sponsorship roadmaps the coaching plans the training plans the resistance plan reinforcement plan that we discussed short while ago so all these will be used so basically this sums up the entire thing so the right amount the right amount of change and the right amount of project is again it depends on it the answer is depends actually the answer depends so we this we in short while ago we discussed how how you take the situation analysis depending on your organization culture and the degree of change um, which is the which is a disruptive change or a minute change uh, so it depends uh, on the complexity uh, of the project that you take so it, it depends on how much how much of degree of project management that you have to effort that you have to put and how much of degree of ch sorry change management that you have to put so uh, so it's a judgment recall and uh, all this you as a project manager will have to decide uh, whether this project and this new customer more effort on change management or more effort on project management um, uh, if it is something to do with culture 
uh, or more into organization attributes and uh, more affecting the individual day-to-day -day of people's individual employees and the level of disruption that is created then it's more towards uh, more towards uh, change management so you are wearing a hat of a change manager if it is more straightforward stuff uh, and uh, pretty straightforward projects then you are wearing a hat of a project manager so which are the which the hat you to wear and which combination to wear which percentage to wear and whether you need expert advice expert change management team from outside to support you uh, it's all depends on these parameters right so uh, quickly uh, we drive into some other famous uh, famous change management theories uh, apart from the ACCA, ACCA is one of the world famous theories, uh, which is more comprehensive theories. Uh, uh, what do you call uh, Levin's for, uh, force feed analysis? So here uh, he was a uh, he was a social psychologist, and uh, and he developed certain theories of change and how to tackle change. And uh, what he said was, yeah, a change. Uh, is a balance between the forces that drive the change and forces that resist the change. So it's not rocket science. So there, are, your CEO and your senior managers is trying to drive the change. Your employees down the level, with together with the unions and the trade unions, are resisting the change. So it's the end of the day, the better party wins. Whether the change drivers win the game or the change resistors win the game. So what he said, what he said was. So any organization will have the forces for change, who are pushing from the other side, the forces for change, the driving forces for change, and there are forces who is resisting the change. And what he said was, from with a, with a one to five scale, you try to weight every forces for change and every resistance to change, and you take a sum up for it and then you will identify and with this one to five scale you will identify which are the highest forces for change and which are the highest forces for resisting the change and then <clears throat> and if there is an equilibrium if the two points are equal then of course there is no change because everybody is fighting you are pushing the change and the other guys are fighting for not to change and if you are equal then of course it's a Robin Hood game. Um, nobody's um, winning it. So, uh, in order to occur a change, good way or the bad, um, the driving force must exist. The resistance, the resistant force. So, so it's what he said. Strengthening and adapting driving forces. I mean, first you have to identify your the, the forces for driving the change and uh, either add add more forces or strengthening, removing or restraining forces and then you will get the change in the direction of the uh, and sometimes you might have to change the direction of some of the forces. So, uh, <clears throat> so as we said, as we discussed earlier also, forces for change, there are n number of changes, maybe because of high profits, Pure, poor efficiency you are implementing a ERP system, lack of innovation, now you are implementing a digitized method or a need to change the culture of your organization, maybe a leadership change, internal forces, a new CEO has come and now he is driving change, maybe external forces, customer demand, competition, legal issues, political environment, um, situation like this uh, or a technological change everybody is digitizing and now you have to start digitizing your processes so forces for change can be internal or external and this we slide we discussed a little bit earlier also so the resistance to change um, will be also um, uh, as we discussed along with all the other slides there will be n number of um, why people start resisting so uh, so once you have this identify these things then of course uh, we can uh, number it and weight it so for example let's take a, for example change of royal mail this is where the uk uh, royal mail was privatized so think of any organization privatized so the forces for change would have been deregulation 
privatization for profit and because of financial losses that the Royal Mail they wanted to privatize the Royal Mail and resistance for change naturally the unions the culture and the uncertainty of the people people don't know what will happen it's it's, it's true for any organization who is getting privatized so it would be some example resistance for change so the next uh, so you can weight these things and then uh, and then you can see sum up and see which side is uh, which side is more powerful whether the forces for change or resistance for change let's take another example say um, say you're upgrading a factory uh, a new manufacturing plant and forces for change uh, upgrading a factory for a new manufacturing plant equipment maybe forces for change would be uh, your customer needs new products so you're you're bringing in new uh, new manufacturing equipments to um, maybe your new production lines uh, new maybe a new shampoo or new production line that you're producing improve production speed with the new new equipment you can uh, you can produce um, thousands of shampoo bottles uh, per hour reducing training time lower maintenance cost all new equipments are full sophisticated robotic equipments that are um, low maintenance cost forces for change against for change um, loss of staff over time so now we say inefficient equipments for this everything is automatic and robotic and, and people need not to take over time so my staff is resistance because their net income is getting down staff is fearful of the new technology so because of robots are getting used people are fearful of the new technology maybe new equipment are not so much environment friendly but then there can be impact on the environment finance manager may be also resisting because of the cost um, maybe some other disruption because some people are resisting about the disruption so these are some of the forces for change and uh, and forces against the change that you can identify on a typical example of of new buying a new manufacturing equipment right so next thing is you can one to five on a scale uh, you can start weighting these things uh, this is one of the four one means uh, um, it's not a big force but the four we are this is one of the prime factors that why we are changing uh, the manufacturing plants because customers need new product and reducing time is also another prime factor for us now uh, resistant change uh, disruption is not much but the cost is a uh, resistant to change uh, is a prime factor and a loss of staff over time is another factor forces against for a change so likewise you can weight it and then you can actually sum it up um, 10 and 11 and you can see the initial assessment so what they say is again draw an arrow arrow which is proportionate to this number so the large the arrow larger the arrow means larger the force and smaller the arrow means smaller the force so here you as senior managers or project managers can have a quick idea quick idea what are my top my, what are my top forces from this side and what are my top forces from this side and you can take corrective actions um, you can reinforce your forces this side and you can take some corrective action to reduce the forces um, maybe you can do a salary increment or basic salary increment as a percentage so that it compensates the loss of overtime something like that uh, uh, cost you can negotiate it or have a discount so so that this the weightage can be brought down so you can do various activities to bring the weightages down so that end of the day the forces for change is more so <coughs> a final sli few slides uh, I know it's a bit of a tough uh, lecture. Uh, it's a uh, it's Kotler. Uh, Kotler is one of the world famous uh, gurus in change management. Uh, Kotler uh, brought up uh, <coughs> an eight-step change model. Uh, it's almost uh, uh, it's, it's almost a uh, little bit compl complementing with the outcome model. Also, if you can uh, if you, when you go through, you can see. So. What he said was actually uh, there are eight steps in a change model. Uh, first three steps he clubbed and said this is creating a climate for change. This is where you try to create a climate for change. Uh, then next three he said 
this is where you confront your, with your employees you directly engage with your employees and then uh, last two is sustaining the change so this is uh, it's almost complementing with the adca model uh, with the prosci adca model also so uh, creating a climate for change like the making a strategy for change establish um, an urgency for change this is nothing than establishing a need for change then uh, uh, forming a powerful coalition this is where like the acca model this is where you try to find out your sponsors the, ch the change management team the structure the change man the, the structure of your change management um, change manager whether you are having a separate team for change management or not create a vision for change this is nothing but creating a strategy for change creating a vision for change and living by the living by the vision we come come a little bit and then as you saw in the ADCA model the communication plan have a communication plan empower users uh, and remove your obstacles and develop plans and create short term wins and and then at last sustaining consolidate your improvements consolidate what you have achieved and reinforce your changes so pretty much it's it's uh, pretty much it's almost in line with that model also so <clears throat> a little bit deep dive uh, in summary level uh, so establishing uh, a sense of urgency means nothing but like like that model like the awareness part of that model uh, uh, have a compelling reason have a need have a completing business case for change why we should do the change and have a completing business case because of the loss of market share competition or cope because of his covid or downsizing or whatever it is um, in, in, uh, why why do we have to uh, do a, uh, a business change uh, for example if, if you are a if you are trying to make an electronic medical record in a hospital, uh, why? Why? Because of why? Why you should go electronic with all your medical records in a hospital? Why you should, you should have a complete business case? Then, like the ADCA model, like the sponsorship model, uh, have a powerful coalition, have a powerful change champion group, have a powerful change champion group. The project manager alone cannot handle this it depends again in the degree of change management again we discuss it depends on the complexity of the project so sometimes the change man the, the project manager alone cannot handle cannot handle this um, change management so then have a champion group and uh, have a small powerful group employee group who will champion the change man there will be a group to champion the project there will be a group to champion the change champion the change meet regularly and discuss the concerns about the uh, employees right then again uh, the the last step of the three, three the three bucket uh, create a vision create a vision create a strategy again uh, as we discussed like that come on create a strategy for change create a vision for change and also what they say is live by the change and uh, and the vision should be very short clear and understand so anybody of your organization should be able to explain your explain your vision within a short period of time so this is why we are going to change and this is how we are going to change of it and uh, so it should be very short clear and understandable right <clears throat> so the co-engagement with the employees then again communicate like that the model communication uh, communicate your vision and uh, guiding your, so your coalition group your change management group uh, will take the uh, uh, major responsibility of communicating this vision to the uh, your employees and receiving feedback from your employees um, and ask employees if the vision is known by communicating mean, ask the employees whether you whether you understood why you why you uh, why you are changing and also demonstrate say for example uh, for example if you're if you're trying to automate uh, so if you're if you're trying to uh, let's say if you're trying to uh, uh, paperless if you're trying to do go paperless if your organization so you are the change management group appointed you are the powerful group that we are going to drive this change then at least you guys should start using tabs 
and if you guys start um, using papers here and there and you trying to preach you know other people that you had to uh, this is our vision to go paperless then it's pointless so you as a coalition group the change manager group has to walk the talk you have to first demonstrate and first you will start using tabs and um, other people and sending emails and you try to embrace that culture of um, uh, paperless culture then try to empower your users try to address your concerns so uh, with the change um, getting in place try to address your concerns try to seek feedback try try to see what are the problems may the system is slow or people um, certain things are cannot be turned paperless so try to empower others and uh, try to remove the obstacles much as possible so that the other people can uh, embrace the vision of your change and uh, and and also create shortcut terms means so maybe you have large project i mean it's a it's a, it's a one to two year project of for a large organization bank to go paperless but then try to divide and to uh, have short, have a shortcut means first you um, first you do a digitize a, a, a branch uh, like um, maybe you want to digitize your bank and it's about a three year project from down the line it's a massive project it's a massive change in the culture and the way you think and um, first you create a, sh a short term win first you create a model branch and then celebrate that then you go to the Colombo uh, region branches and you celebrate that 90% uh, of successful uh, completion of your project so uh, likewise create a short term wins and establish this it's like rewarding it's like actually rewarding and sustaining the reward so it's like uh, in a rewarding in your ad, ad model so uh, create short-term wins and uh, uh, then you consolidate uh, then once you have done it uh, these two activities is reinforcement you consolidate your improvements uh, discuss the funds once you have done the model branch um, digitizing the model branch then uh, you discuss the weak points you discuss the system slowness or discuss the issues and this and that and and clear, clear all your teething issues and then go to the next branch of digitizing your next bank branch so uh, so consolidating your improvements and then setting policies and procedures and operating models and uh, so that you anchor the change you anchor the change and you uh, and reinforce the change so you hereafter you say all communication between branches should be email and everything all loan applications with the branch should be through the um, uh, e-portal that you have introduced uh, um, the kyc uh, loan discussion should be through whatsapp um, uh, through electronic means uh, no more customers are coming into the branch so um, I'm, I'm set clear policies and procedures so that people will adhere to and people will anchor anchor the changes so it, they won't revert back to the old method of uh, doing things uh, change management uh, so so these are one of the three uh, common uh, theories that you come across in change management and uh, it goes to hand in hands with project management 